Hey, this is Peter from Nexton Web. Many of you have asked for tutorial videos showing how we make the template sliders for our library. In this video I will create the static full page slider so you will know exactly which features were used. Let's start by creating a new slider. I would like to have a full page slider to have a slider with the size of the browser window. The default size values are fine, so press create. Add three images to this slider. I suggest using full HD images, as they will look good probably on every screen where your sliders will be viewed. I'm picking those kind of images too. If you take a look at the preview, you will see the default layout of a full page slider. It is a pretty big slider with minimal design arrows and a traditional sideways slide switching. Let's improve this a little bit. If you take a look at a template, you can see how it is switching automatically and this behavior is indicated by a line running on top. Also, there is a play pause button on the top right to have control over the autoplaying. This automatic slide switching can be turned on with the autoplay setting. 8000 millisecond interval will change to the next slide in every 8 seconds and that will be fine for us. So we can move on to the autoplay control. This button can control the pausing and playing of the autoplay. I will need the darker arrow and I would also like to have a different style. The background color should be white and the edges should be rounded. The hover state will have the same design, so I just need to clear its tab. My autoplay control is ready and we can take a look at it. By clicking this button, the autoplaying will stop and with another click it will continue. With an indicator you can show that you have autoplay on the slider and the visitors can expect the automatic slide switching. I will just pick a position and change the height of the indicator line. The track where the line goes will be transparent and the line itself will be white. Let's take a look at it. The indicator line is going as expected. A white line marks where you are within the 8 second interval. As the next step, I will choose a shape divider. Shape dividers can create empty spaces in the top or bottom of the slider in different form of shapes. For this slider, I will need a bottom shape divider. There are several settings, but now I will only increase the height of the shape a little bit. This is done, and we can move on to the main animation. The main animation is how your slides switch without additional animations, and for this design, the face sliding is better. This way, the slides won't move, they will just appear in front of each other. The slider settings are done. We can save our slider and go inside the first slide to edit its background. The images of my slider are quite bright and I would like to darken them. This can be done by picking a background color and lowering the opacity of the background image. I have done the same for all my slide backgrounds, as you can see, and now we can create a static slide for the layers. A static overlay is a kind of slide which won't move while your regular slides will move under it. And this is where I will put down my layers. Let's start with one row, one column structure, because I will separate the top and the bottom part of the layers. Then a heading layer can come with my first text. For the design changes, the font family, the font size and the font weight should be different from the default values. And the same should happen to the rest of the texts. They will have the same font family. Only the size and the weight of the font will be changed. Once they are done, the structures can be adjusted. This row will look better with less width. And now for my buttons. I will need a two column structure. Let's start with the left button. Replace the text and change the font family and the font weight here too. In the more settings you can find the rarely used styling options. In this case I need some letter spacing and the letter should be uppercase. Now I will change the background color, the padding, and a border radius. And the next button can come. In this layer, the text should be replaced and I would like to use a different color. To pull the buttons closer to each other, I will lower the maximum width of their row. Lastly, I will put down my three social media icons. For this, I need a three column row with a smaller maximum width. For the icons, I will use transition layers, which show one image by default and another on hover. I will just pick the default image and the hover one and do the same for the other two icons. 
To make sure those icons will be on the bottom, click on the row of the higher layer and turn on its stretch option. Now you will have to align your layers to be vertically in the center of this stretch column. Take a look at the preview. If you switch the slides, you will see the static behavior that your sliders will stay fixed in front of the other slides. The next step will be the improvement of the responsive behavior. On the tablet view, the drastically text is too big. With the font resizer, we can make it smaller device specifically. The mobile view has similar issues. The texts are way too big. You don't need to resize each text one by one, but you can decrease the font size on the parent elements too, to affect every layer inside them. Another issue will be the default wrap after setting. This setting breaks your column into multiple rows for smaller views, which could be nice in a lot of cases, but now I'm using smaller layers, which have enough space to stay in the same row. That's it. My slider is responsive now, and we can move on to the layer animations. Predefined animations will be used with a little twist. In the settings of your layers, you can find a crop option. By choosing mask, you will only see the animation happening within the layers area. For the next heading, I will use a split text animation. These animations affect the characters, words, or entire lines of your heading layer. For the rest of the layers, I will just pick other predefined layer animations with the crop mask option being turned on on some of them. The timeline is the best place to adjust these animations. Here you can easily drag them into the timings you would like to have them. And their duration can be increased or decreased with your mouse too. Take a look at the result by pressing the play button. This was the last setting this template slider needed. I hope you have learned a lot by seeing all the different aspects of the slider and slide editing. If you would like to see more similar videos in the future, please leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye!